Uh, welcome Why everybody to on? Snake's Revenge on the I NES. One bad uh, NES Metal Gear game was enough, apparently. Okay, everybody. So even though the 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 NES port of Metal Gear was a spectacular pile of fuckery uh, that uh, completely missed the appeal of the original Kojima classic, unfortunately, it did sell really well, especially in America. So Konami they have America to thank, technically for there being snake sequels. Yeah, um, more like Metal Gear. Snake. We received information from our intelligence man at the enemy space. They have a weapon. It is Metal Gear, which you destroyed for years ago? Question mark. Go to the enemy base with two men. The pilot will. Drop it's because you, uh, you accidentally read it is when it should have been is it. Ends the question. Anyway, John Turner in the Navy's Info Center for six years is an infiltration pro. Don't worry about these people, they have nothing to do with the cannon, and they're going to be immediately forgotten or die uh, somewhere in this game, so don't worry about them. Lieutenant Solid Snake is a martial arts expert? I don't remember that being... whatever. He destroyed Metal Gear 1 and is now Operation 747 leader. And that, hey! that looks nothing like Snake. Even, even Metal Gear 1 uh, Snake doesn't look like that. Wait, hold on. Was that thing actually called Metal Gear One back in the game? Oh, okay. Don't you see, Basically, okay. Guys, well, technically, I've been Jova. Out the gym. Well, actually, never mind. Um, the only portrait we saw in Metal Gear One was big bosses. Basically, Jova, in the original Metal Gear Two, and by that I mean the real Metal Gear Two, um, this was back before Yoshi Shinkawa met Kojima. So originally, Co um, Snake looked like Mel Gibson. Um, oh, I get that. I, I get that. So eventually, but then when Yoshi Shinkawa, well completely created the Metal Gear look as we all know and love today. Uh, when they re-released Metal Gear 2 in 2006, um, they changed it to the sprites to fit the actual art style of Shinkawa. So. You know, speaking of art styles, am I the one who found it weird that while Solid Snake is the one in Smash Bros. Brawl, they used his Metal Gear Solid 3 model? Well, that makes sense, considering at the time it was... Well, Even his um, early well, yeah, game well, yeah, Metal yeah. Gear Solid 2 model? No, 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 no. Um, it's his middle. Um, it's basically naked snake because he's got the beard and facial hair and brawl. Yeah. Mm. I, I got it. Rations. The weird thing is that that's not actually Solid Snake's look. That's uh, yeah. Like that's snake. supposedly yeah. Naked my snake. my guess is they were trying to make like uh, this is a uh, snake in between two and four maybe. I don't the know. The funny thing is like, well, I actually had played brawl before. Because in four, the yeah. Because in four, he does have a mustache. So. Well, yeah, but not the beer you either. But yeah, oh God, could you point. guys, could you guys imagine if they tried to include, if they tried to incorporate the two NES games into the official? Anyway, category? to try to bring this back into this, so the audience can have and Shiroi can have an idea of what the fuck is going on. Thanks for your help. Basically, Shiroi, what happened was the same team that ported the NES Metal Gear uh, got ordered to make a sequel to it. Here's Why the problem. didn't just ask Kojima in the first place to make a sequel? We have no idea. Konami got a Konami. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, this team uh, got around to making a sequel. Here's the problem. There's basically no stealth of any kind in this game. This is basically a. This is literally just a generic action game. It does keep some elements, like saving hostages and avoiding the spotlights here, and, and avoiding the spotlights here and there. But aside from that, this is a completely unrecognizable as a Metal Gear game. Snake doesn't look like Snake. The characters are not the ones that we that have been established in the previous game. Uh, also, I love how. But that's happened, Jennifer. But she only shows up at the end anyway. The also, stealth is the, the whole mechanic that the series was built around from the get-go. So Shiwei, the Shiwei, there's no cardboard box in this game. How oh, dare they? You cannot you have a Metal Gear game without a cardboard box? What are you, nuts? Jesus. Hey, um, like, I mean, hey, even Metal Gear Rising had the cardboard box. Yeah. Go ahead. What is hey, it? Bro. What? Do you, even, even if you, you know, considering I'm not a big fan of stealth, would you think... Would you think someone like me could at least enjoy the game? No, and I'm about to explain why. Well, it depends. I mean, if you like Contra, I guess, because... Well, I in, that, in, that in that case, Jova will you will just, you know, ask him to just play Contra. Anyway, well. just to explain what's going on, I've asked John to distract the guard, so I, so, and he's going to get captured so on you, purpose. Yeah. So that some, the guard... Some call me Johnny distracting the guard. You're probably wondering, what is this plan all about? Basically, these guards are fucking retarded, and while oh, and, and and while taking John in, they accidentally forget to close the door. I guess so. Now I can go in. 
I guess, to be fair, they were kind of dumb in the first middle. Um, oh, wait, oh, wait, hold on. I love this. I like this song. This is one of the few redeeming qualities of the game is the music that you hear when you're playing in the 2D section. Uh, Let me check what the composer was. Shiri, was Manor expressing her opinion at the game just then? <laughs> I, I think so. Anyway... Uh, Look out, you may run out of breath in shallow freaking water! Okay, uh, if you thought there was little, little stuff up until this point, there's literally no stealth in these 2D sections. These 2D sections are literally nothing but generic discount contra, basically. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Jova, the composer is Tsu Tsutomo Gura. I recognize his style like, before checking, but now I can confirm he's the same who composed for the... Um, I think it's the NES uh, Teenage Mutant the Turtles game, Turtles in Time. Mm. Basically, everybody, since this game is a fucking uh, pile of fuckery, I'm go we're going to just do a quick uh, look at this just for just one part. Don't worry, we you will see all of the story bits for what a little story this game does have. Anyway, go ahead, Dibs. Oh, okay, no one can avoid no, it. No, 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 so yeah, now we're fighting a rugby team because <laughs> I. So we're wait, are we fighting England or Wales? England. So yeah, Shiroi, as you as you know, Kojima was not involved in this sequel. Um, Doesn't he hate them. Yeah, he does. We're not this boring. I I don't I, I I don't know if he has ever been asked about Snake's Revenge, but he did express his distaste for the first and yes Metal Gear. But anyway, um, here's the interesting thing about that Shiroi. Even the developers knew that this game was not a real uh, was not really uh, true to the spirit of the series because even the develop one of the developers of this game met Kojima in a train and specifically told him. That uh, okay, uh, I'm I was working, I'm working on this sequel, and Kojima wasn't even aware that Konami was making a sequel. Um, however, honestly, I would have much have preferred to see you yourself make a sequel. Um, actually, um, actually, Pedro Kojima has. Yeah, I was about to say it. I'm quoting Wikipedia here. When interviewed by Stephen Kent in 1999, Kojima stated that he enjoyed Snake's Revenge and he thought it was quote unquote well, faithful to the Little Gear concept. I didn't say well, that. Kojima once jokingly stated that Snake's Revenge was somehow of a crappy game. During 2009 the Game Developers Conference, he later stated in an interview with Nintendo Power that he doesn't consider it a bad game. I didn't say that he... I, I, I specifically said I don't know if he said that's, anything no, about... No, but that's what, that was... That was buggles me. What, Kojima actually liking this game? Well, remember, Teo, he's, he he was... Fr well, remember, Teo, he was friends with the developers, so I'm guessing he doesn't want to shit on them. Mm, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe he actually does yeah, legitimately I like it. On the first one, so I sure. don't understand why yeah. he'd feel any differently now. I mean, if he wanted to say how he felt, he would. Well, well technically, this yeah. isn't... This isn't oh, bastard look at that music. It was music from the first game. Well, remember, guys, this isn't bastardizing one of his games, so... Sure, whatever. The and point is... honestly, for as many problems... Like for as many problems as this game has, I wouldn't really call it terrible. Now we're fighting three and naked balls. fat guys throwing grenades Inside at us. Holes. Inside <laughs> holes. Calls. Also, Kojima is one of the most vocal developers I've ever seen in any medium, so I guess um, if he wanted to say how he felt about sure. it, he would have. Whatever, yeah. the point is, what well, regard, regard this game's credit, admittedly, this was when the series was like, you know, way in it, into its nativity, so it didn't really have, you know, its proper, shall we say, identity put down, so I guess I can see why he wouldn't be too mad at them taking a new direction and, sure. and whatnot. And you know, Kojima! Well, there's more problems I have with this game aside from that, so allow me... I Anyway, yeah, uh, like well, like I was saying, she, like I was saying though, just to finish what I was saying, um, uh, so yeah, it was because of that developer from this game telling Kojima that he really would have loved to see Kojima make a sequel himself, a real sequel to the original yeah. uh, NSX game, that Kojima got uh, inspired to make that game. And guess what? By the time that train ride was over, he already had the basic story in his head. Um, yeah. And he got to work in the next day. <laughs> yeah. If anything, I guess Kojima was just more probably more upset that they never asked him for the sequel in the first place. Yeah. Anyway, see, the rest, uh, to answer Libs' question, yeah. 
See, the problem with this weapon is that it's not just the fact that this is a generic action game, it's not a very good one. See, the problem is that there's quite a lot of cheap stuff in this game, and also the story is, well... So I guess in that case, I can't even... In, I can't even... It's not even a case of DMC. Hold on, this. I, I love how I love how the the new Metal Gear is literally called Metal Gear Two. <laughs> <laughs> so I take anyway. your it's, not, it's not even like it's not even like DMC where I haven't played any of the games yet. I can still enjoy it on its own. Uh, I don't know. There's I'm I'm not touching the one with the foot pole. Honestly, Dribs, it just strictly depends on how much you're willing to put up with this. If you're really into the running gun stuff, I mean. I mean, to be fair, like any NES game, there's a lot of cheap stuff here and there. If you can look around that, I guess you can get some enjoyment. I mean, the gameplay. Is These not sections broken. suck major shit, though. Because, uh, because there's so little you can do to defend yourself in these sections. Well, not so much. How have you got so little lock? Oh no, wait, it just replenishes itself. No, it's because yeah. it's one, the way it works. Tank, so. The way it works is each. Uh, notice in the bottom right corner, that's an oxygen tank. Every time the bar decreases completely, I lose one of those. So I have a total of four uh, oxygen tanks. So I so I have to get out of this before I run out of oxygen in general. Basically. Yeah, but the problem is apparently snakes breathe so fast that it yeah. defeats them so fast. I mean, I can, I can imagine now snakes breathing. Apparently <laughs> he has asthma or something. Well, to be fair, considering what he does, I can understand quick breathing. As long as it's not he's too probably, he's, probably, he's probably out of breath still. Or something. So to sum up what little story this game does have, basically we got to the ship where Metal Gear 2 is, we blew it up, but turns out there's yet another Metal Gear. Um, and so not, so now we must go find it and destroy it as well. Which admittedly does tend to be kind of the basic plot, uh, you know, yeah. for most sequels. Hey, there's a new Metal Gear, let's get rid of it. One thing that I like about, um, well, they, 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 they mix it up uh, for each game though. Like uh, in Metal Gear Solid 3, we actually fight the prototype of Metal Gear before it was even called Metal Gear. Yeah, but essentially it's Metal Gear. But again, again, again. What helps them is like, well, the story surrounding that basic mission definitely helps to be, flavor it up. But to be fair, the franchise is literally called Metal Gear, so... I, yeah. I wasn't critiquing it. Sure. I've been captain the transport train, but I've set up the transmitter. Sure, a character that we know nothing about and therefore I have no reason to care. Also, another thing, Pedro, that uh, you, I think you forgot to mention in, when you covered the NES Metal Gear port, uh, apparently it actually got a re-release, but only a single one as a limited re-release for the GameCube as a bonus disc included in the Twin Snakes, uh, and only in Japan. Wait, do you mean this game? Oh. No, the, the NES no, uh, first Metal, Metal Gear. Metal Gear 1 yeah. on the NES. Oh, really? Huh. Apparently, and only for <laughs> Japan, all <laughs> Ironic. Whatever. Right. At, whatever. Shortly after that, uh, Metal Gear Solid Free Subsistence gave us Metal Gear One and Metal Gear Two. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, guess what? Uh, John here turns out it's not John. It's actually a enemy that was Spy. pretending to be him. And who cares? How deep? <laughs> See, the thing about this game is that it's just a typical NES action game, um, which even compare, which for which and remember, which considering honestly, even by me, even kind of get as a sequel to the original Metal Gear and the NES. The original Metal Gear and NES was bad, but at the very least, it still had some semblance of the um, of the original plot. This one, on the other hand, is just so I phoned got in. Powered armor. Oh, so you're Master Chief right now? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Let's go with Samus. As Duke Nukem pulled out, power the armor train seems to have stopped. If there's one thing I'll definitely thank this game for is that uh, it gave us Metal Gear 2. So there's that. The, the mm. one Kojima made, obviously. Alright, Tracy. Oh, Kojima to make that one. Go ahead, Jova. Sorry about this late communication. Military operation is a go. So yeah, the dialogue in this game is nothing but pure raw exposition. So don't don't expect Shakespearean in the theme. Don't ex <laughs> don't expect to get uh, any character development in this game. I even though the game will still try to have a character death to uh, at the end. Um... um, it depends really on your perspective. I mean, I'd say it does the basics, sort of. Um. Mm... Just a little below the original Metal Gear 1 script. 
Which uh, admittedly was old for the time, so I can see why. Now Metal Gear 2 for the MSX, that's where the plot really gets going. Yeah, that game uh, was quite the leap forward for video game storytelling. Yeah. But... Which I mean the way forward. <laughs> 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 yeah. Speaking of, the new game we're developing recently seems to be promising. Well, it's way forward. Way forward. Mm -hmm. What new what game? Did... But the, uh, the, the Mummy Demastered, apparently a 16-bit oh yeah, that's 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 Metroidvania that's based on the official Mummy movie with Tom Cruise. Cool. <laughs> Demastered so... seems to suggest that it's a remastering of a game. No, apparently it's Demastered because it's in 16-bit graphics. I'm still waiting for um, Square Enix to go... Sorry, go on. I'm still waiting for Square Enix to go nuts like they did with King's Knight. Recently, and uh, and just have way forward remake Marco's Magic Football. <laughs> Can you could you, could you it's imagine? Their property, I forgot. It's their could property, yeah. The could you imagine? The we established it in the playthrough the two. I forgot. It's here. Could you imagine the adverts for the Mummy Demastered? Tom Cruise is 16 bit in the movie. <laughs> Go ahead, Shiro. Oh. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, never mind. I forgot that. Uh, uh, come here, please. Never, never mind. I forgot that uh, the text goes automatically. Never mind. The point is, uh, Jennifer says to get over here. Basically, don't worry. Go over here. It's not like the game. It's not like the game cares to even. Is all the text automatic or most of it? Basically, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Unfortunately, I have no control over it. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. Java yeah, will be I Jennifer, I guess. I can definitely hear the style of music they use. I mean, it's not bad per se, but it just doesn't fit Metal Gear in, it, in itself. Again, this is definitely more of a Contra thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. which, which you know, don't get me wrong, I love Contra, but this is not a sequel to the game that this is supposed to be a sequel to at all. Again, the reason I'm more lenient on this is because this was literally the oh the second game of the franchise, which was following Metal Gear One, which while good, it didn't quite have as many of the iconic things that actually characterized the franchise until the second Metal Gear game. So I can yeah, go, in a wow. sense, it leaves it kind of hit that interesting point, even though for not the same reason. It's similar mm -hmm. to DMC in a sense, but it could have been somewhat interesting if it was just its own thing and actually polish the plot instead of being, you know, offensive. Instead yeah. of being just tied to a main franchise and just ruining it uh, by having little to nothing to do about it. Yeah. yeah, this game has the excuse that this is back when the series was in its infancy and and a lot of companies tend right, to do Joe. a bit of wild stuff on oh, no. You can reach me at the main base. I have something important to tell you. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you later, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this game has two excuses, that being that it's on the NES and stories were never that deep, so I can guess why they may not have won their continuity. And also because, for some reason back in the old days, a lot of companies did some weird stuff with second games of franchises. <laughs> Zelda 2! So yeah, just, just like in the first game, you, yeah, you have to fight a tank with, by using mines. Yeah, they're literally reusing this boss battle from the first game. Still with the same stupid crew. Not just that, but it's even easier. Anyway, moving on. Oh, wow. Oh, are we battling Gilgamesh now? Oh. Sorry, too. And now, <laughs> this! Well, never mind, you actually, I'm... Um... cable car. Yeah. So oh, you can just stay in the corner and they never see you. Charming. Yeah, basically, the way this works is, um, you have to try to keep them from seeing you. And the best way to do that, I actually looked it up when I redid this. Uh, turns out, if you just stick to the, in the, in that particular little corner, uh, they won't see you because they only look up. All right. More 2D sections. Honestly, yeah, yeah. these 2D sections aren't too bad in regards to doing some Metal Gear stuff. I mean, yeah, obviously you don't get to... No, okay, you've been taking away the... Much, but, okay, fine. Uh, taking say, away the Metal Gear say. stuff. It's not even just that. I find the gameplay in, the, in this just so be so simplistic and forgettable there's nothing there's no gimp no particular spark to any of this it's just it just comes across as discount contra i was almost about to say this in a sense but it looks unbalanced when it comes to the obstacles i mean one room you can get these multiple water rooms where um you you almost drown if you don't go you know sprint fast enough but in other rooms 
they're just barely empty or with barely any obstacles to do. It just feels as if there is some kind of unbalance, not even in a sense of, oh, the game just lets you breathe for a bit. Mm, I don't know. I mean, it's a mixed bet. The difficulty I mean, curve is all over the place. Yeah, that I can definitely agree with. For me, the 2D sections are a mixed bag. At some points, they actually do feel like, you know, they're giving you some semblance of chance of having to dodge out of the way if you want an easier time. The problem is that they don't stay consistent enough with it. Alright. <laughs> stab them. Yeah, it's much easier if I just do that and stab them. As opposed yeah, to apparently speed. if you stab them in the feet... Oh, well, so. crud! Detected. Oh, crap, oh, crap! Fortunately, I managed, I managed to manage to get out. Anyway, skipping to the last level. Okay, uh, in the, much like in the original Metal Gear, you're supposed to use bombs to blow up walls, Zelda style. Um, however, instead of punching them to figure out which ones are vulnerable, um, you just use a little... Um, the X-ray goggles. The, the X-ray goggles. Uh, last I checked, X-ray is about examining the inside of the human body, not walking through walls, at least not the particular X-ray that humans use, but hey, what do I know? Well, well it's it, the it, metal it, universe. Not just that, the drawing. Usually in media, especially in Hollywood movies, X-ray is used for anything just to pierce through yeah. things to see through walls. Also, still, still being faithful to the floor trap, I see. Not just that, but um, the respawning ammo thing still exists. All that I can appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for and that trap keeps getting uh, spawned. Oh, never mind. Turns out it didn't this time. I think you stepped in just the right correlation to not trigger it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on. So will this time Snake actually manage to fight the Metal Gear? Oh, that's just a... F well, okay, if there's one thing I'll get credit this game over the previous NES game, in this game you actually do get to fight Metal Gear. However, it will not be the most exciting fight. All you'll be doing is just fr launching missiles at it through, a, through a, this little tunnel thingy. You don't actually fight the thing itself, you just stay there and, <laughs> and throw it's bombs at it. Nothing. It's better than the previous one where we just fight a computer that has nothing to do with anything, I guess, but still. Yeah. I mean, hey, was the hey, NES like uh, less powerful than the MSX or something? No, it wasn't at all. It would be perfectly easy for them to port the original MSX uh, game to this, and I think even Metal Gear 2 could very well be ported to Especially this. Especially because, Joel, when you think about it, the Metal Gear fight in the MSX version wasn't that spectacular either. Yeah. Yeah, true, true, true. In the other, I'm per I have no idea why they took out the the Metal Gear fight itself. I think I think what would probably have to go is that they would have to s alter the color scheme because I can understand the color scheme and the screen crunch, but other than that, I don't see why they had to change the other stuff. Now, aside from color scheming, I, I, don't, I don't know about screen crunch, but aside from color from color changes, I don't think they would have to do anything to port the the, the MSX games into the NES if they wanted. The problem is that uh, remember this was back when Konami's biggest franchise in the West was. Contra, um, aside from Mega Man, I guess. Um, oh. Oh, sorry, uh, Mega that's Man. Capcom. That's Capcom. Wait, 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 sorry, wait, that's wait, Capcom. Wait, 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 wait. I made oh, a mistake, no, okay? No. Jeez, don't oh, crucify no. me for it. Hold on, Jova. <laughs> Hold on, Jova. Yeah, I guess the term you were using was actually Castlevania. Yeah. It's funny how now, it's funny how now Konami's biggest franchise in the West is um, Pez. <laughs> Well, Bomberman's making a comeback, and surprisingly, Bomberman is actually paying respect to their franchises. Like, have, you, have, you, have you seen... I know, Prime, right, Jova? I'm, I'm actually a... shocked someone remember Rumble Roses. So. A, I know, there's been, right? There's, there's been a major update recently that's added the new mode and that. I played it, but... What, you mean with the Castlevania bits? Actually, And there's, and there's a new right. game mode, too. Yeah, that too. Yeah, the one with Dracula is the villain. I'm actually surprised at the support Bomberman R is getting, but hey... Good on them the more the merrier. And hey, maybe this means we'll get a new Castlevania game sooner or later. That isn't of a single game, please. Hey, don't lie. But, uh, but, but Jova, what? It's another sequel to Lord of Shadow. But Jova, what are you talking about? <laughs> I will love that. But Jova, what are you talking about? Pachinko machines are the way of the future. But to be fair, Dweebs, the Mercury's team is involved doing Metroid games apparently at the moment, so yeah. Ah, yes, the next gen of consoles are going ah. to be all Pachinko machines. Well, oh, maybe yes. they can find another Spanish developer. Shiroi, um, they, were... they technically kinda already are with some titles thanks to loot boxes. 
Uh, yeah, about that story, the Fox engine kind of got upgraded to be used for the Pachinko Metal Gear game. Sure, beautiful. Use the Fox... The, 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 degrade the Fox engine by using it for Pachinko machines. Thanks, Konami, so, thanks. are ready for another video game crash, or...? <laughs> Well, you know, you know, here's what I don't get though. Pachinko games aren't even available over here, really, to the point where if you want to play a pachinko game over here, you have to hope that they port it. And yes, they have ported pachinko games. <laughs> Was there uh, any pachinko okay. machine in that Konami building you went to? I, I don't remember. Sure, I've that... been trapped. Ha ha ha. To give you an idea, Shiroi, the Fox engine was so versatile and well put together that even the Xbox 360 and PS3 were able to run Phantom Pain without a problem. The I mean, only we had, problem to, Kojima, we had to lower the frame rate and resolution to 30 and 720p, but aside from that, the games run just fine. The only problem Kojima ever encountered with the Fox engine was when he tried to do Metal Gear Rising at first. But that was because he well, was, was too ambitious for his own project. Wasn't that back when the game was meant to be... Uh, yeah, wasn't that before Platinum Games stepped in? Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. He, Kojima wanted to use the Fox engine, but for the thing he tried to accomplish, it was a bit too much for yeah. he wanted to, what he wanted to chew. It was still a bit early, they didn't need to work more on the engine. Probably if Hold on, uh, this is the death scene. Go ahead, Jova. Now, uh, I got key card number eight. Go ahead, Jova. We have discovered that Jennifer is a... Spy. Dun dun dun! Too bad don't care. System is in Big Boss's room. So yeah, it turns out Big Boss is still alive, like we saw at the end of Metal Gear One. Lead him out, then attack him. And oh, and now he becomes. <laughs> oh no! Um, what's his name? Died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also... I can't take this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. This is uh, Big Boss. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. This is Big Boss. You destroyed Metal Gear 1 and made me a cyborg for some <laughs> reason. <laughs> now I want revenge. <laughs> okay, to be fair, cyborgs are a thing in the Metal Gear universe. But when, but here's the thing. When Metal Gear Solid 4 introduced that concept, they actually explained that in here it just comes out of nowhere. It's never right. explained. Hold on, didn't Metal Gear Solid 1 introduce Yeah, it? technically. Well, yeah, that too. Yeah, 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 I guess. But Metal Gear Solid 4 was the one that really went forward with making it more prominent. But yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'd, I'd say it was pretty prominent considering... Ha, ha, ha. I, I have the weak point. <laughs> I mean, so now I mean, what? Hey, Pedro, could you imagine if Big Boss taught like this in the um, official games? Mm, well, maybe. he did in the first Metal Gear one. Yeah. So no, what to do? I mean, I mean, the ones where Big Boss has a voice. Okay, so basically, uh, for some reason, after damaging Big Boss for a moment, he turns into this Terminator-like cyborg. <laughs> and the only way you can defeat it now is by basically abuse the shit out of landmines. You know, funnily enough, this is kind of similar to how the actual boss fight with him in, in Metal Gear 2 on the MSX goes. Well, actually, that's more so uh, the fight against Grey Fox more than anything. No, 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 no. The fight against Big Boss. Remember how he's constantly tracking you down in that boss fight, too? Well, well yeah, but now you have no equipment, trap. though. You have to use the, the lighter and shit. Oh, I get that, I get that. But I'm saying it's like, well, this is pretty similar. Into, the, into that, you have to set traps for him. Oh, that. And he's no, constantly no, hunting sure, you down. Sure, sure, I guess why not. Warning. Metal Gear 2 is operable. Personnel are to go to the underground shelter. So yeah, I killed Big Boss, and yeah, the big villain of the franchise gets killed without a single fucking word. <laughs> oh, nice. Um... Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, Jim? Also, Joe, uh, sorry, Pedro, I see your life keeps decreasing. What's happening? That's because, um... No, that, that's because, uh... It's not li no no no. It's not my life. It's time to remember. It's the usual shit where you know now it's, this thing is gonna blow. All right, the timer. It's just placed awkwardly. It's okay. Just smoke a cigarette. Thanks, Snake. You can go into the secret plant from this door. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Sh Jen. Should I believe uh, the words of Hitler. a? Bye, Jennifer. You were completely pointless. Bye. Let's just move on. Come on, yeah, thanks. 
So yeah, right after defeating oh. Metal, quite the this is kind of like uh, okay. Shouldn't we? You should have just fight Metal Gear right after Big Boss. This this period where anyway, Snake, yeah, this climax is a big deal. Snake, follow Jennifer's instructions on entering secret plant to blow up the wall to enter. The spot is marked by a flare. You must not fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, car no smoke bomb. And that somehow wait. How, since when do smoke bombs destroy steel? I thought smart. I thought the whole. I thought the whole point of smoke bombs was to. Oh crap! New York. Oh shit! Jo oh shit! Jova's Jova's town is a a target. Quick! We have to destroy the Metal Gear Two before it destroys New York. I thought New York was the problem. <laughs> this is <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. New York is a safe haven. Well, remember, Shiro, this is 1980s New York. All right, moving on. <sighs> so you mean that Snake Priest King is trying to get out of New York? Mm, maybe. What? Uh, the movie, I think, oh, 1987, Ooh. Escape New York. Oh, didn't know there was a movie called that. Really? You should see it. Actually, interesting. Anyway, similar, to Man, similar to Man Man. Future. All you have to do yeah. is so there you go. This is how you fight the Metal Gear. Just keep throwing missiles and make sure the guy the missile towards its eye. And there you go. This is the final boss battle. But you have really? to be careful because the doors are closing in time, and you don't even have to worry about being attacked. No, really, no. <laughs> you just but stay you have here. To hurry before time's running out. You just stay in one spot and just spam missiles. That's basically it. I'm not even I kidding. Can't. The biggest obstacle of this boss battle are the doors, not the actual Metal Gear. Oh, so <laughs> that's what Quantum Break was paying homage to. Sure, let's go with that. That makes it kind of really, uh, stupid. More stupid in hindsight. Also, Jova, uh, this movie that I just linked to, that I was talking about, Escape from New York, it's probably one of the main inspirations also for the Metal Gear franchise. Really? Interesting. Yeah. And by the way, it says keep out. Mm hmm. That's actually one of Kojima's favorite movies. Anyway. Keep out. No, Escape from New York. Oh. Is that the one with Kurt Russell? I think so. I think I saw its sequel. Wait, you made a sequel to it? I think it's called Escape from LA. Oh. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it. You're right. That's it, guys. We destroyed Metal Gear 2. Or sh oh. sh shouldn't it be Metal Gear 3? I'm firing then? missiles for a ventilation. Whatever. Why do I feel so? Guys, After please. the completion of Operation 747, the UN Space United States declared. declared the UN. <laughs> oh, the UN declared. Okay, fine. John Turner was listed as MIA. Guys, 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 you have periods in your font. Use them. Anyway. Nick Meyer was promoted three ranks after dying while in Fox Sound. <laughs> Oh, no. And that's it. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what about Jennifer? Uh, she's not important. She's not important. Moving on. She hmm. was erased from existence. Well, <laughs> that was a thing. Sure, sure, sure. This isn't the ending of Nier. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. That was Snake's Revenge. It's a... It's a... What a mess. It's a thing. It's... It's fine, I guess. Now, okay. I mean, okay, okay, okay. Honestly, considering how early this game came out in regards to how young the franchise was at the time, I won't slam it too much because they are obviously still trying to find their feet with this. Well, now, if this, were, say, a, now if this were, say, a later game in the franchise, I'd be ripping on it more. And that's not to say that this game doesn't have problems. It does. It has a common NES quality of having those occasionally cheap BS moments. And yeah, the story isn't the most gripping. And yeah, sadly, and maybe they couldn't have predicted that this would become unpopular, but yeah, it is kind of a weaker version of Contra when you get down to it. Yeah, and that's one of the problems. That's not a problem. If I wanted to play Contra, I'd just play Contra. Not just not just that, but Jova, doesn't that just technically mean that it's a game that, at best, as aged poorly oh absolutely oh absolutely it, it's definitely aged poorly like a lot of games from that time yeah that's the sad part the original metal gear while it does have some dated aspects here and there actually has aged uh quite nicely it's still fun to play 
Anyway, still fun to what? Fun still to fun to play. Fun to play, right. but anyway, so yeah, that was next revenge. That was a game. Yeah, that was a game, basically. Yeah, that was a game. <laughs> Tune in next time. an interesting experience, but now the real show begins when we get to Metal Gear 2 on the MSX. The real yeah. sequel to Kojima's original classic. So, that we didn't right. get till like 2006. Six. Basic, yeah. basic. Japan gotta be exclusive. Well, considering the MSX was, well, not popular outside of Japan, I can understand that. Yeah, but they could have easily have ported but Metal come, Gear 2. Come? How yeah. come Europe got the MSX version of the first game? Honestly, Webs, yeah. even even though technically it came out in Europe, people most of the time don't even know it was uh, it was around because it looks like Commodore sixty four. The, the European release of the MSX was so obscure. I never heard of it. Did you ever hear of it? No. Exactly. Not that much. I don't yeah. think I was alive around the time. Well, you're American. You didn't have the MSX yeah, at all. I think we jacked this part oh, on yeah, right. See everybody from Metal Gear Two. Yeah. See ya. See ya.